Chinese essay, Ian Chadwick, a renowned motorcycling blogger says, Motorcycles are about control, subtle changes in body position, a slight motion of the wrist, a casual shift in the location of elbows and knees. All of these affect the ride, the lean angle and the power applied to the wheels. To ride a motorcycle is to apply the entire body to the art of riding. Everything the rider does has a result. To ride is to remember your body, to use it. To ride is to manage a vehicle and its resources. He goes on to say, on a motorcycle, the real world is never excluded from the experience of traveling. We can smell the world, we travel through, feel the wind buffet us, hear the sounds. We are aware of our environmental relationships, of the road conditions and of our surroundings. We ride in the world, never merely past it. Motorcycles are not our shells, they are our transport. It's only 4 a.m. but this is no ordinary day. This is the right day. A hurried shower, some last minute packing and the final zipping. All of this ensure before we get on our bikes to start off on the monthly pilgrimage. The riders are all anxious to head off on the first destination, the meeting point. Any gathering of riders is generally sociable and more friendly. A place where strangers talk animatedly about their interests and their bike. Drawn together because of one common interest, motorcyclists have a basic underlying respect for anyone else who rides. Most of the riders are previous acquaintances and the sheer joy of catching up with familiar folks is overwhelming. The designated pilot and sweep teams are noted, introduced and the riders now get to business. Quick introductions are done and the ride instructions are provided. At BMC, the staggered ride formation is followed with the pilot leading the pack and the sweep team covering the rear. The shuttle team shuttles across and governs the overall ride. This would be the beginning of another fascinating journey and the joy of the wind cutting across your face only adds to the excitement. Here we go.
Atma Niranjan Prasad, fondly known in the biking circles as Niri, started BMC. He is now the president of the club and is mostly seen piloting the bike rides. With his fun and jovial personality, you can be rest assured about smiling faces with him around. Apart from riding, the multi-talented Niri can also be seen honing his acting skills at a local play theater nearby. Okay, it all uh, started when I was working in Royal Enfield. So, when uh, there I got a job as a regional rider for Karnataka division and afterwards um, uh, I left the job for personal reasons for maintaining the school and everything which is my parental uh, business and after that um, for the riding of my passion uh, me and my few of my friends such as Karthi Gowda and Surendra Puvel which had got contacts from Royal Enfield branch store itself uh, we all started a club called as Bangalore Motorcycle Club and we did a logo design and we started riding and uh, some almost some four years back. Uh, we have done almost three mega rides, that is uh, the Trans Himalayan ride, Bhutan and Nepal and every month, third weekend there will be a ride and every month, second Saturday there will be a club meeting. And uh, we have got individual rides also, people who are interested in uh, going for individual rides, they contact together and they go on riding and all. So we are on our own doing riding rides for our passion rather than money. BMC, I have been involved with BMC for the past uh, three years. I have, was one of the co-founders when the club was started. For me, BMC is like a break from my routine. and It's a break that I look forward to every month. You always have certain inhibitions in expressing yourself in your uh, daily routine life. But here, you just be yourself. You do uh, what you want. Of course, uh, with certain principles, uh, but this is a place where you can be what you want to be. It's about touring on the bikes, going to see different places. We got good weekends around, and good places to see around Bangalore. And I think it's the best way to travel on two wheels. And we've been doing it for the past few years, four or five years, and it's fun. So BMC is a very, uh, you know, a very friendly club. A family kind of a club. You you get to meet a lot of people. So uh, the only reason is uh, the only reason I ride with BMC is uh, the rides are amazing. Uh, people you get to meet uh, friendly people. Uh, this it's like this for women. I mean I'm 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 40 right now. We kind of grew up brought up in one particular way and taught. I belong to one generation at least one or two generations ahead of you guys. And we are brought up in a particular way saying that family is all important. You are meant for family and all that. And we also grow up, get into a job, get married, have children. We are in a full family setup. And we come to a state where we are kind of one center point around which the whole family functions. And at that point of time, we mentally and emotionally, we get into a complacence. Wow, without me, family is nothing. At a particular point of time, when things start functioning independently, like your children tend to grow up, and suddenly when you look back, there is nothing what you have done for yourself. In the name of, you know, living for the family, you have kind of completely compromised everything. Not necessarily it has to be like that. No one is telling you you have to sacrifice or compromise everything you want to do, everything you have for the family. There, is some, there are ways and there are methods where we can accommodate what we want to do and have our own space also while being a part of the family. That is what is the process. We call it like reinventing myself, which is what happened with me also. I was doing everything only with the family. At a point of time, I also started becoming that stereotype cliche where, oh, I did this for my family. I did this for you. I didn't even do this because I wanted to be with you at that time. I started saying this to my daughters. And I said, what the hell? I didn't, this is something which I didn't want to do. I didn't like my mom saying this to me. Why am I saying this to my daughters? And that's when the reinventing started. And the, I needed a platform for that reinventing. I couldn't do it on my own alone. I needed some support system. And BMC was a wonderful backbone for me. BMC is uh, like a second home to me. Uh, I've been riding with BMC for the last three years. Uh, I've been riding otherwise, but uh, BMC gave me an opportunity to you know, explore beautiful places in and around this beautiful country. Um, 
you know my first ride was ladakh it was an amazing ride i i just loved it uh, every day was an adventure um, there were multiple adventures in a day so you know uh, it's like you know imagine spending 15 20 days um, with one set of group, um, group of friends um, having fun uh, facing challenges together um, you know during adversity come together and be for each other um, it's it's a different experience uh. see they keep asking you okay so how is it to be married to a man who writes you know uh, his first love being bullet always and you know, how do you manage that but what i think is the passion he has towards his bullet the way he takes care of it you know it's all amazing initially you know i was a little bit jealous saying that oh wow okay it's your bullet fast and not me and all that but gradually when i see the commitment when i saw his friends in bmc the way they're absolutely committed to their bike and the ride it's so much it gives a different definition for the word passion you know they're so passionate about it the first thing i'm like oh my god i am going to ride the bike you know i have to feel what it is to feel the wind and the breeze and just to see the road and nothing else you know i just want to feel that you know when i see bmc guys is like wow i want to ride i want to know how it feels like bmc initially had been this club that you know i i had to choose because i i was on the lookout for some serious uh, let's say a disciplined set of uh, riding adventures and thankfully i happened to meet roshan suren at you know uh, during one of my work work related meeting and uh, they they invited me over to bmc and ever since then the fact that i i pretty much made to every ride since the past 2 years now uh, that stands testimony to what what bmc means to me uh, it's a fun club uh, more than anything it's been a club that's that's kind of evolved from being a club to a sort of brother you know the camaraderie that that we share amongst ourselves uh, the fact that we are all comfortable pulling each other uh, each other's legs and you know making fun inviting people over to our places you know uh, just like they were uh, another set of relatives etc so bmc for majority of the members uh, people who are regular i'm sure they would agree with me when i say that uh, it's it's more of a brotherhood these days than than a club as a secretary of uh, bangalore motorcycle club uh, i actually have to send messages for the riders so that uh, they get to know their starting point and uh, anything extra things they have to bring so i'll give them the information well, i've been here about 6 months before i before i discovered it because uh, i i've ridden the lawn a lot so all over lot and uh, first thing i did when i got here was buy a bike mm-hmm. because i hate the rickshaws and just to get around and then I was doing weekend trips and um I hadn't really met any any anybody else that I kind of clicked with at work and then I, f- I found it on the internet I was a bit nervous about it because you know sort of being being out of not from from India um I didn't really know what to expect and I've been in clubs before but it was really easy I sort of just got in touch with the Nanjan and he said you know yeah come down and I went down for a coffee and and then instantly i think i spent most of that evening talking to video you you know a good friend now and he made me a big list of places to go and sent me a big list and so it was a sort of instant clicked with a few people and then when we went on the rides and ever since i've been going on them it's somewhere new every time and it's big it's big groups riding bikes is 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 the main thing for me but i can do that solo i can do that anytime i can do that every day So BMC makes it more of a more of a It's exciting. It makes it, well, it's it's not so exciting. It was more exciting doing it on your own because it's more of a challenge then and especially if you're a foreigner you have got to find your way or whatever. So it makes it easy in that in that sense. But it was it was just a good warm feeling, you know. The first time I went uh, everybody made an effort to include me and you know so it's more the um mutual interest. people who really take care of everything starting from planning and advertisement and uh, there is a very good backup team who who does all the technical jobs and like you know finding places booking uh, hotels or homestays and you know organizing the routes like most of the routes which we gave, we do is like uh, quite a different places which they never saw like never saw in google or any maps or anywhere but uh, 
uh, some of the core members of BMC there uh, like they're well aware of the you know conditions and place nearby here and uh, they know some places where uh, most of uh, most of the touring guys which we, we say right they don't know and that's why we get like uh, goosebumps whenever we visit new places. In the year 2013, BMC went international. The riders motored into Bhutan starting the ride from the Indian state of Bihar. Starting from Siliguri in India, the riders crossed over to Bhutan via the land border and proceeded to cover the cities of Paro, Timpu, Punaka, Trongsa, Senkur, Monka, among others before crossing back to the Indian side of the border over to Assam. The ride finally concluded in the beautiful city of Guwahati by the banks of river Brahmaputra. Fifteen riders across ages and gender spent 10 glorious days exploring Bhutan turn by turn, mile by mile, village after village. Speciality about Bhutan is all about meeting people. You find very lovely people over there, very respectful. They talk to you in dignity and these things. A very small country and a very happy country. This is what I found in Bhutan and Bhutan is always a sweetheart ride for me. That was my first annual ride, first long ride. And uh, in a way, those who were riding with me were kind of pros and I was a total novice in that. When I rode to Bhutan, my vehicle had crossed hardly 2,200 kilometers since I bought it. Quite unexpected kind of roads, very twisty. We are talking about hairpin bends. There almost every bend was a hairpin bend. I still remember uh, Surain telling me, please stick on to the left side of the road even if you are taking a turn. I am getting scared that you might be hit by a truck or something. So that was the level of novice what I was at that point of time. And uh, But every single person who was there was so patient because some of the difficult stretches, I will be the last to reach the place and all, all of them will be there ahead of me. I'll be the last. They'll be patiently waiting for me in the next meeting point. And the sweep, uh, which was Nagesh and uh, Imran, doctor who was there with Nagesh, never left me. Whenever I, I used to kind of apologize to them, I'm sorry, I'm delaying you also. Nagesh used to say with a very pleasant and cool smile, it's okay. That's all. And that kind of gave me the confidence. And that experience, the entire experience of Bhutan ride, stripped me of expectations, especially expectations during travel. I used to have certain expectations like, okay, this is the standard of room, this is the standard of thing I should have, this is the standard of toilet facilities I should have and all that stuff that totally stripped me of all expectations you're not going to have a good toilet facility or a good room if you want them you can stay in your house you're going for a total travel experience total riding experience just go only with that as your expectation and nothing else it stripped me of all my comfort zone all my luxury and everything it just made me concentrate more on riding and travel Bhutan is very sweet uh a small uh, tiny Malian kingdom one must go there uh, and people are very humble very down to earth like very less people about population of around place of seven lakh and beautiful places to stay and so you can do it a week or a 15 day ride and you just got to get, get, get permits and stuff you don't need a passport you just need a driving license or uh, you know, an old ID that will do it Braving obstacles over 14 days, 13 nights, 1350 kilometers, the riders conquered the mighty Himalayan kingdom, conquering each curve. <laughs> Slipping through some, all the while, supporting, waiting for each other, and in some cases, caring for the others as well. Bhutan, the first international ride, came to an end.
पहले दस आउट हो गए मेरे बोले तुझे है क्या हुआ ऐसे कोई उड़ता है क्या खुश है या खो गया पंख उनको दिखते नहीं है उसमें मेरी क्या खता उड़ता जाऊं मस्ती में मैं तो दुनिया की सोचू मैं क्या quite common to see the bikers watch in awe as Imran is in action fixing seemingly impossible problems 100 cc 350 or 500 Imran's capable hands have kept the show running for all of us Imran is uh, you know is the blood source of BMC uh, you know without Imran BMC I don't think would be the same uh, wouldn't even function Uh, there are so many instances in fact you know every rider be you know two or three instances that he he is quickly converted in possible situation into 
possible situation. He would have, you know, they would have bike broken down, and we will be looking at stars, sun, moon, uh, God knows what. And he will come up with some jaga, then quickly fix it, and then uh, helps us get going. You know, uh, if it is not for Imran, I, I don't know, you know what would have been state of the ride. It's a good thing that you know we call him a doctor rather than a mechanic. He's one amongst us, a very dear friend to every one of us. Imran, uh, we call him the bike doctor because he is uh, the mechanic of the club, but he is much more than a mechanic. You can trust him with anything. So there have been times when somebody has met with an accident and he, he's just taken their bike and rode, uh, whatever the condition of the bike. So he is one person the bike just cannot do without. Time and again, in all sorts of weathers, Imo, the bike doctor, has been the go-to man at BMC to ensure the wheels are in motion and things go on without a hitch. Bavali, the first village on the Kerala side of the Karnataka-Kerala border, is a customary stop for the BMC riders. After crossing the scenic Nagarhole range, this calm and scenic village provides the weary travellers some much needed respite. It's common to see travellers from either sides of the border come to Bavali for some fresh purchases on their dash home. At the famous hotel, one can find habits that are remnants of the olden days, while most of the other businesses have now moved on to the common cooking gas fuel, Amina still prefers cooking using wood as the fuel. This place has been a particular favorite among the BMC members for its tasty assortments of fish and other Kerala snacks. For Amina, this place is the whole world. Her everyday income from running the business helps her take care of her granddaughter, Shahalat, and this little lamb. Shahalat is five and Amina is all she has left. As destiny would have it, this adorable little girl lost her parents at a tenderly young age. For now, Amina's world revolves around her granddaughter. For the riders, Amina's famous hotel is a special place and a gentle reminder of the lifestyle from the bygone years. April 2014, the Himalayan fever continued as the riders set out to conquer the Kingdom of Nepal. Starting from Siliguri, the riders proceeded via the Kakarbeta border. They toured the length of Nepal via the cities of Itahari, Janakpur, Kathmandu, Dulikel, Nagarkot, Pokhara, Tatopani and Muktinath among the others. Each of these places are renowned for their rich history and the stunning views of the Annapurna ranges. The journey, however, wasn't all that easy. The riders squeezed through some narrow gaps and just as the excitement settled each time, there was another storm brewing up.
different person when I was riding Nepal. Number one, I did practice very well before going to Nepal. I tried uh, doing certain solo rides to places like Ailagiri and uh, Kuli Hills because I didn't want to do. I didn't want to be a person lacking behind when the entire crew is kind of you know passing through the mountainous roads at a good pace, and I don't want to kind of delay them by lacking behind. I wanted to gain my confidence on the curves and mountainous roads and any kind of terrain. So I did my own homework before going for it. So touch wood, God's grace, I think I was able to keep up with the pro riders. But still, there were a lot of unexpected terrains. For example, when we started from Janakpur and we were going towards Kathmandu, after a certain point, there was no road. We were just riding in anything that came up wherever wheels can take you. So and uh, it was. It was a very different experience and it kind of gave me a lot of confidence. It was fun riding it because you never know how the roads go and it was always challenging to stop the bike on an inclined slope of 45 degrees and plus to help your fellow riders who are in trouble. In general, Nepal has this kind of a vibe, you know. You kind of feel that vibe in Nepal where you feel that a kind of a power center kind of thing. Whatever they talk about it in a sci-fi movie, there is something, there is a power center to it. You have to go and take the that core or something. Nepal was something like that. And I remember a couple of other riders, fellow riders also experience, I mean, uh, expressing the same point of view. It kind of, you could feel the energy literally palpitating there in Nepal, every place where we went. And it was a beautiful place, despite the lack of electricity or despite the lack of roads. It was an amazing place to go and it is. it was really heart-wrenching to see all those Darwari Squire and all those heritage sites which had just come to a scrape during this earthquake. And we had we had walked those places, we had clicked the places, we had rode those places. And the Bhaktapur Darbari site, I mean the Bhaktapur uh, Darbar Squire and the Heritage site, we rode through that to reach the main square. All those had come down to a scrap during this earthquake. It was really heart wrenching to see that. It was a beautiful place. People were very friendly. The typical Pahadi people, friendly attitude, that was there. And as I said, Nepal has an excellent heritage. I mean, it goes back to several centuries and all those just coming down. One thing what I felt, I mean, I re read about another motorcyclist whom I'm acquainted with being there and he was actually riding there at that time, riding uh, around Nepal. And he so happened to be there and he just attached himself to the relief people who were working there. Just said, probably it was not written that I should have this opportunity to do that and that's something which I felt probably wish I was there to do some bit my two bits whatever I could for that relief at that time because it was such a beautiful place it deserves everyone's effort to bring it back to what it was if not what it was something close to that Okay, why we ride or why you ride and all, I don't know about that particular thing because one, one uh, person will have their own uh, perceptions. Why I ride is because I found the only passionate thing in riding because uh, the command between you and your vehicle, I like that uh, concept and uh, the uh, there is some vibrations between you and your vehicle and when you are riding it, it moves on. It, it goes on and we are exper experimenting on that thing, how, how much is that vibration and I found motorcycles is an awesome thing, uh, it goes on, that's why I'm, uh, that's why I ride, I ride, I want to ride. In Leh Ladakh it's a different terrain, so riding in different terrains in the uh, nature, uh, that's a real awesome thing, uh, getting away back from the work and uh, other tensions and these things and all, you completely back on track on the road, leave free, ride. Riding is not something which is a hobby. Um, Riding is something, and I, as I say very often during all our rides and when we get together in the evening, riding is a way with which I reinvented myself. So more than a hobby, I would call it it's my passion. Uh, why ride? Uh, firstly, it's 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 always been about the bikes. You know, the fact that a tiny motor that that can propel two wheels and take us into great distances that has always fascinated me. And more than anything. Uh, 
uh, uh, there's this quote that comes in mind you know uh, two wheels move the soul four wheels move the body so nothing nothing takes you closer to uh, to nature like a bike so it's it's always been about that feeling the air brush your face and you know just letting yourself lose out in the wild so that's that's primarily the reason uh, why ride riding we ride because you get to see new places at your own leisure it's not like you know you are uh, bound by restrictions you have in a tour this is like uh, you are with yourself seeing new places getting to know a lot of people learning about them sharing stories with them so it's a different experience why i ride um, you know riding connects to me uh, you know like what niranjan and many others would have said uh, riding connects you know you can feel the nature you you feel the terrain you challenge yourself terrain challenges you the feel good factor is amazing it's it's really beautiful uh, i'm grateful that i've been riding here you know. tradition of riding third weekend of every month you know well, and we get to meet on the second weekend we going to we get to meet all the riders in our monthly meet and third weekend is going to be the ride so let's out you know it's a good thing where once a month uh, you know we can head out somewhere out of your busy schedules you can take some time out and go see different places you know just that's i think that's the biggest uh, detox or stress buster got some you know uh, i do understand niri's wife arpita writes and uh, we have gayatri yeah uh, that that woman is the inspiration uh, at the end of the day she she's somebody who's so full of joy uh, i i envy her spirit at times you know uh, she's got infectious energy and uh, she is she is definitely somebody whom at the end of the day if if i ever better have a daughter i would certainly make sure she meets gayatri and you know i get gets a bit of her into in her at the end of the day biking let's accept it it's it's more of a man's world than than a woman's world here uh, we are yet to soak in the culture where you know uh, we have a lot more women riders accompanied lot, you know uh, by by a lot of men riders etc a couple more riders you know people who used to come as pillions with us in the rides they have taken up riding and uh, nothing better than that yeah, yeah. the more riders the merrier it is so yes uh, it's it's good to see them ride you know uh, on a serious note it's fantastic to see them ride and uh, i i hope i get their company in much more rides yeah that's, that's cool. and another thing is never compromise the way you want to live your life for anything there is nothing in this world which is worth compromising that and anyone who are true like let it be your anyone who loves you truly let it be your family or your friends or your people around you will definitely be a part of the life which you want to live so just go and live life to its fullest
August 2015, the mother of all rights, the trans Himalayan ride to Ladakh. Starting the journey in the pristine valleys and beautiful lakes of Kashmir, the riders set out on the offbeat and lesser taken routes through the mesmerizing dry mountain topography of Ladakh, visiting the high altitude lakes that kiss the borders of Pakistan and China before finally ending the ride in the lower Himalayas in Himachal. Riding on this 17 day adventure sure is a lifetime experience. Leh Ladakh is such a terrain that let's say 15 minutes before the roads are proper and after after you have rode or even when you are as you are riding there are landslides happening every now and then so you can never predict the nature in Leh Ladakh you just need to take it as the nature gives you i would say you are you 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 know you will look for more words adjectives to describe your experience of leh ladakh it's it's one kind of a ride where you have to experience if you are a serious rider amazing experience uh, amazing bunch of people so you get to stay with them for 17 days you get uh, uh, you get to know uh, who you are what you do uh, moreover the leh ladakh the himalayas it teaches you what you are what what is your capability uh, rather than what people are so that was one good experience in my life it's one place where you know you just forget everything in this world it gives you the kick or whatever it is that nothing else can it's it's the best thing that that probably has happened to me i'm sure this is the same that everybody who's been to mountains would say uh, so you know there's a saying you know mountains call you back uh, there's there's a reason why people go back again and again and again had chap given to me by niranjan who had already done uh, leh ladakh uh, two years back so uh, uh, it was pretty easy he he just gave me few tips how to you know pack pack up saddle up for my ride you keep it simple uh, i was you know going through many uh, blogs uh, where uh, uh, health tips were given because uh, three to four days we were sleeping at 16000 17000 altitude so there the oxygen will be very thin so uh, you your body should acclimatize to that kind of situation uh, i i uh, used to go to uh, uh, walking jogging gym that was that was a uh, health uh, side uh, preparation during that days there was earthquake more over the tremors in uh, srinagar indo pak issues cross fire cross firings heavy rains and even cloud bursts there were many people or my friends and my relatives who came to me and told maybe this is not the right time to do this right but since bmc was ready and the excitement was more on our side so we took a step we got snowfall we got rain we got sunburn even minus 2 degrees freezing temperatures this is what leh ladakh is the mountains are absolutely gorgeous every 15 minutes you know the entire scenario scenery changes it's just like wallpapers everywhere and they keep changing uh, it's it's stunning it's absolutely stunning uh, people who haven't been to mountains please do uh, it's one amazing amazing place the lot of places is this not just mountains uh, it's not just snow capped mountains the dusty mountains rocky mountains there are uh, deserts uh, you know sand dunes in kondar uh, 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 you get river you get all grasslands name it you get all five types of terrains and you know in in one one location it's a cold desert so it's very different than what you get to see not just other parts of the country but in the entire world you won't get this kind of terrain or uh, you know the the natural beauty anywhere in the world
Each and every person is different. Uh, see, uh, initial two days, uh, you feel yeah, everyone is good, and later on, as I said, 17 days you are together, you get to know what they are, what you are, more than what they are, you get to know what you are, what is your patience level, how you can uh, overcome the situations. There, there would be situations where you you would have a very verbal, you know, fight with the other co-riders because situation makes like that. At higher altitude, your uh, oxygen level will be very less, uh, so you tend to get hyperactive. Uh, uh, the roads conditions because uh, you will have to ride on the roads which has pebbles completely, probably say 100 kilometers, 110 kilometers. That road situations uh, and the, uh, we start the ride at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning, and we used to ride till 10 p.m., 11 p.m. At the night, so that frustration level builds up. In South India, we uh, we have good food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And once you get on to the right, a few times you don't get proper breakfast, proper food. Uh, so uh, that that again adds up uh, adds up for your frustration level. So you will you will overcome different kind of people. So, but yeah, after a few days, you will get to know how to handle these situations. The group is also very big. Uh, you were all circulations and uh, almost everything will get upset and you get irritated for each and everything and you will uh, not respect the fellow riders also and it's a very big ride people will have problems with for various various reasons in Leh Ladakh it may be a homesickness it may be some other problem it may be the offloading what they are doing from uh, past three to four days maybe the group someone is irritating so you have to maintain that uh, brotherhood kind of thing in Leh Ladakh and moreover you won't get sleep in the night and all because of the oxygen level over there it's a very big thing in Leonard of maintaining things keeping yourself calm respecting the fellow riders and respect the mountains one funny experience funny and scary uh, both uh, we started from Srinagar passed by Patni top a beautiful place and we entered the Kashmir Valley uh, we stopped in uh, a place called Sonmark. Uh, to, uh, it was a, a beautiful meadows are there in Sonmark. We stopped there for a click. Uh, you know, uh, we were about 25 riders, so the group was split. First half, say 10-15 bikes was taken care by Roshan. He was the main pilot, and uh, I was the second pilot for the remaining few bikes. After the click, uh, Roshan, you know, started off with the f uh, first 10 bike, and uh, the, after five minutes, I started off with the rest of the gang. The meadows, which what you see around in uh, Sonmark, it's beautiful. So I wanted to capture that. So I, I stopped by. I just uh, there was a rider behind me. Uh, I asked him to lead the team for a few minutes until I joined. So he was leading the team. It was actually uh, say 11:30 by that time. So we had to stop for the uh, lunch, early lunch. Roshan had indicated that he would be stopping on the main road. A few bikes had stopped and I, I really don't know how I missed them. They, they had parked their bikes, say 10, 10 11 bikes were, had already parked uh, on the left uh, left hand of the road. And I, I did not notice them and I passed by them. That is where I uh, lost the entire gang. And then we finished our lunch, then we found that Anil is nowhere to be seen. We waited for about half an hour and uh, since there's no network there, it was very tough. So some of them went back looking for him. Uh, it was very panicking situation because you know a, a biker could have fallen off the cliff or bridge or things like that, and you would never get to know. I I was in assumption say uh, saying that okay probably the hotel was uh, not there. Uh, Roshan would have gone uh, further. So I, I was continuing on the same road. Uh, we were traveling to Kargil. This happened when we were traveling to Kargil. We did go back 10 kilometers, and we also went ahead 10 kilometers just to see if he's missed it. We couldn't find him. Uh, it was very very scary. 
then we had to move on because we had a big group there uh, waiting for everyone and it was getting dark uh, not dark but getting late we had to climb zozila and reach kargil that was our destination so after sonmarg uh, i entered zozila pass then i stopped for few minutes uh, thinking that okay uh, roshan is father probably the sweep sweep team behind me would catch me up so i stopped there for few minutes uh, after 10 minutes nobody turned up so i thought okay probably let me move and uh, at least try to catch up with roshan we got a cops there police station and then give a complaint that itself was a event because unlike other police stations here you just cannot walk into a station there are barricades in front of police station there are armed guards with your ak47 is waiting for you we finally you know gave a complaint and then we started moving on uh, they ensured us uh, they have blockades road blocks everywhere and if at all they happen to see we gave anil's numbers bike numbers and everything I entered Zozila I completed Zozila I finished uh, I I came to the uh, end point of Zozila where you have a big board Zozila pass at 11500 feet and there is no network uh, no BSNL network no other uh, vendor network so I was waiting for half an hour nobody turned up so that is where I had this uh, Zozila pass was the first when I started to get the uh, symptoms of AMS uh, I was there for about half an hour I I started to have the headache uh, it was like a someone hitting with uh, hitting a hammer on my head is that kind of a, a symptom so uh, then i thought okay let me go ahead for the go ahead and uh, wait uh, in some place uh, when i entered das uh, i was lucky enough uh, i got a bsnl signal uh, the first call was from uh, surin uh, the, the moment i uh, picked up the call uh, he was blasting me anil where are you uh, i said i am in das we are waiting for you for 3 and a half hours in sonmark we we searched you all around we were looking for scratches on the road you know the tarmac which comes out once you have a fall we we were looking for you in the cliff whether you had a fall i said i'm in ras i'll wait for you guys please come uh, 5:45 is the time when i saw roshan you know going i had parked my bike on the main road uh, i shouted for her his name uh, shouted at roshan roshan nahayar we saw in dras town somebody shouting oh hey <laughs> then santosh and i like stop 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 there's something i saw something then uh, this man was <laughs> running running and coming towards us so uh, they stopped and um, everybody gave me a hug oh you are still alive <laughs> So till then they had thought okay Adil is gone and uh, nobody spoke anything and then uh, we reached Kargil at 9 uh, 9 o'clock it's not a nice thing where bikers goes lost in in middle of the mountains where you know the border is so close and things can go wrong uh, you know there are a lot of different thoughts that was running on across everybody's mind a few days before uh, our ride uh, there was a terrorist uh, attack uh, in udampur in sonmark we had to pass that way so we did see uh, you know uh, there was a uh, hats off to the army i seriously say hats off to them uh, they do a amazing job the they take care of they are the they are the backbone of the country i would say uh, they take care of us because of them we are here peacefully sitting so uh, i am i'm really proud of uh, indian army um, so a terrorist attack had happened or uh, there was a huge you know uh, troops which were you know, uh, each and every minute you see a soldier carrying a gun walking having a vigilance so that was one thing and the landslides yes we did come across the three landslides but lucky uh, uh, we uh, we all uh, came back safe uh, the again it's army who clears the landslide it is matter of minutes they do that 5 minutes 10 minutes they clear off the landslides when we first crossed our first pass the zozila this zozila pass comes in between srinagar and leh it was a kind of achievement and when we were at the top of kardungla our joys had no boundary there was a kind of emotion in my it was kind of okay i've done it i've achieved it because always i used to think i don't know how i'll ride in the rough terrains and 
Leh Ladakh being such a tough terrain, you never know. It may be your mistake or the mistake from some other person. You never know where you end up. But I think it was the best experience of being on top of Kardungla at 18,000 feet. The view of the Nubra Valley and the camel ride at Hunder. It's one of the best experience you can ever have. Really the best days of my life. I would definitely recommend uh, Himalayas to uh, any serious rider. Any any rider please do Himalaya. once in lifetime you know experience you need to have uh, definitely stay calm at higher altitude keep your attitude low any hurdle you will definitely overcome
I'm a little bit of 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 a little